Well, as you no doubt can see on the screen, Brother George has titled his thoughts for this evening, Hereby Know We, Thou Art God. Brother George. Thank you, brethren. Well, brethren, it, it truly is a great blessing and joy for Sister Florence and myself to be together with all of you as we have been this past week at convention. It thrills our hearts. We've been uplifted and blessed richly. It was the words of our beloved brother Paul, which were written in 2 Corinthians 12, 2-4. Fourteen years ago, I was taken up to heaven for a visit. Don't ask me whether my body was there or just my spirit, for I really don't know. Only God can answer that. But anyway, there I was in paradise and heard things so astounding that they are beyond a man's power to describe or to put into words. Have you ever thought what that experience was like for Paul? Or what it would be like if we could be transported beyond the veil for even just a a one-second glimpse of what lies beyond of the unspeakable joys that await us for all eternity, if faithful. Well, brethren, like the Apostle Paul, I don't think we would ever be the same. We would burn ourselves up with a fervency of spirit every moment of every day, the the like of which we could never dream possible. We think of what we have done with our lives the last month, the last year, Would they have changed in any way if we had that one second glimpse beyond the veil? We realize that how each of us conducts our lives is in proportion to how strong our faith is in all that's promised. Oh, that we could increase our faith to such a degree that we could live with the fervency of spirit as Paul without having that one second glimpse or so beyond the veil. Recently, I was moved by a thought that was very profound to me and I wanted to share it with you, praying that perhaps in some small measure it will help increase our faith. All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all I have not seen. What we'd like to consider and reflect upon this evening is those things that our eyes can see which can strengthen our faith to trust the Creator more fully regarding those things, those promises of what lies beyond. Genesis 1.1 In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Such a simple statement to describe the work of our great creator for billions upon billions of years. Let's first go back in time to take a trip through the heavens for a brief moment to see the greatness and the wonder of our great God as he brought forth the glory of the heavens. Billions of galaxies such as this were brought forth, each having a hundred to four hundred billion suns. If we had the privilege of living out in the country away from the city lights and we looked up overhead, this is what our naked eye would see. Kind of a side view looking through our Milky Way. You can hardly discern the individual stars. It kind of looks like a faint cloud. But as we zoom in a little closer, we see them in all their glory. All these galaxies and stars are governed by fixed, unalterable laws of God. Billions of sun in each galaxy, and astronomers can see over one billion of these galaxies. But this is one of the most awe-inspiring photos ever taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Scientists tell us that what we see here is just a tiny speck of the sky. And it's equivalent to if you were to hold a grain of sand between your thumb and forefinger and extended it an arm's length, what we're seeing on this slide is what is in back of that speck of sand. 
with the exception of these two four-pointed these two four-pointed stars what we are looking at here are not stars brethren but every speck of light you see on that screen is a galaxy a galaxy of billions upon billions of stars each of which we believe has a planetary system like our planetary system of earth for the future creations that will be brought into existence the intelligent life that will be brought into existence in all the ages and eons of time just as isaiah 40:22 tells us behold the lord god who stretches out stretches out the heavens like a tent to dwell in all those billions of stars are suns with planetary systems that intelligent life will dwell in and just think he telleth the number of the stars he calleth them all by their names all i have seen teaches me to trust the creator for all i have not seen next brother we'd like to consider a prophecy we refer to so often that it may have lost a bit of its meaning i truly believe this is one of the most faith strengthening prophecies we have its setting is in the city of babylon the king of which was nebuchadnezzar the rebuilt ruins of babylon are a witness to this day of its existence the scriptures tell us nebuchadnezzar was king and he had a dream of four universal world empires an image that depicted this the head of gold was a picture of babylon breast and arms of silver medo persia belly and thighs of brass greece the legs of iron picturing rome and the 10 toes the 10 divisions of the roman empire and then you recall there was a stone cut out of a mountain without hand it strikes the image on its feet grinds it to powder and the wind blows it away and then the stone grows and fills the entire earth How could Daniel writing at the time when Babylon was the first universal world, world empire know that there would only be four not two or four or six or eight or 10 but four How could Daniel know the time element of the Gentile times was to be seven Bible times of 360 years each or 2520 years from 607 BC to 1914 it could only be if there was a supreme intelligent creator that revealed it to him brethren we have seen this fulfillment as clear as day exactly on time the gentile dominion was struck a crippling blow beautifully pictured by a stone being cut out of the mountain without hands striking the image and the reality being pictured by the stone was christ's spiritual control which began evicting the gentile powers exactly on time in 1914 even as daniel prophesied in daniel 244 and in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever brethren we have seen the awesome fulfillment of this prophecy exactly on time in 1914 when the eviction of the gentile powers began the divine right of kings came to an end after the striking the image was ground to powder picturing the gradual breaking down of the vast gentile powers until finally the wind will blow them away an anarchy will bring a complete end to all the remnants of the gentile kingdoms and then the stone grows and fills the entire earth christ's spiritual control will be exercised in all the world during the kingdom 